Today's class is on herbalism for activism. They don't actually need to be viewed in order, nor do you need to view the entire series if you're only interested in one part or another part. Um, this class was at the request of a patron. So hi, patron. Um, we are covering what she asked us to cover. Um, that patron did ask for the class to be publicly available, not available only to patrons. So that's what we're doing. Um, moving right along, I need to add some additional disclaimers. We are not medical professionals. We're right, this, herbalists. This is always the case, but it's particularly relevant for this class. Yes. Um, nothing we say in this class should be considered medical advice um, or an attempt to diagnose or treat any ailment, illness, syndrome, condition, disorder, or disease, um, because we can't do that. Uh, this is, however, just the advice of an herbalist. Um, well, two herbalists. Today's focus is one and a half herbalists. Ian is in journeyman. Um, is on herbalism for self-care, maintaining the body, the mind, and the spirit, if you believe in that, skeptics still welcome, um, for activism. Today's is on how to prepare for uh, activism, how to get through it okay, mostly, um, and then how to come home and recover. By activism, I want to be clear that I mean everything from a protest to a sit-in to um, you know, blocking the entrance in or out of the establishment. Um, the patron who requested that we teach this class actually attended a five and a half hour long sit-in that we did in an ice detainment facility in 105 degree weather outside. Um, and basically was like, how should we prepare for this? And um, how should we recover from this? And that's what launched this whole series. I'm aware that not everyone is protesting in such extreme environments, so please adjust accordingly based on your unique circumstances. I don't know them for everyone, but I know that people are protesting in everything from 95 degree, degree weather with 80% humidity to very cold temperatures um, when they're doing things like protesting pipelines or deforestation. Um, nor do I particularly care what issue you are protesting for or how you're doing so, you know, whether you're doing it full view, no mask on, or um, concealing your identity, as long as you're not a Nazi. Um, no Nazis, neo-Nazis, uh, neo-fascists, fascists, or members of the KKK, or any other white supremacist, I think I already said white supremacist, but I want to be really clear, y'all aren't welcome to this. Um, Go find advice on how to be a marching fascist from somebody else. Um, sorry, that was a tortured sentence. All right, so let's start with something that I've noticed, um, which is that a lot of people don't know that the first sign you're dehydrated isn't um, a shift in the color of your urine or a pounding headache or dizziness, um, it's thirst. Thirst is the first sign that you are dehydrated and that you need to drink water. Um, additionally, water, just straight up purified water, um, can sometimes pass through the body and strip it of the nutrients and electrolytes um, and minerals that you need to stay hydrated, or your body can retain water without you really receiving the benefit of the water. These are two um, serious ways in which drinking a lot of water may not actually be benefiting you. Um, we recommend that people who are protesting not get so focused on protesting that they forget to hydrate and that they hydrate using um, water to which they have added an electrolyte powder. Why we don't recommend Gatorade. 
Um, it is a lot of sugar and doesn't actually have that many electrolytes. Um, if you like Gatorade, cool, you keep doing you, you keep drinking that, but um, it's not the one that we recommend. Uh, there are several other sports drinks on the market. I've seen other activist group recommend. Um, I just like to use an unflavored, unsweetening electrolyte um, powder that we add to the water that we put in the steel water bottles carried by our participants. Um, so that's, that's what we recommend. Additionally, in the electrolyte uh, category, pickles are your friend. Um, yes. <laughs> so, so much. Having a cooler with chilled pickles in it is very, very, very helpful. Partially because of the salt, which brings me to another point, which is um, keeping lots of easy to eat, light, easy to process, salty snacks um, and eating periodically. Uh, I know it seems like, wait, I'm marching and you want me to like take a snack break? Yeah, actually I do. In particular, treat it like snacks for hiking. Mm -hmm. You want things that are high energy density that are, that are variable energy release time because you don't want to have to sit down and eat a full meal, but you want to keep your energy level up. So, um, trail mix can be a great way to do this. Uh, energy bars, um, protein bars, jerky, jerky um, if you eat meat, uh, but basically light, easy to process, salty snacks that you can have alongside your electrolyte fortified water and your pickles. Um, a cold pickle on a protest day is awesome. It's heaven. Um, also, if the pickle water tastes amazing to you, you are, you so, are dehydrated. so dehydrated. You're way more dehydrated than you realize. Um, moving right along. Uh, we recommend that people who are doing a lot of marching and a lot of protesting or a lot of hiking um, and, and mountain climbing uh, have bone broth. Um, relative off, often, like the thick gelatinous this stuff jiggles bone broth in order to replace um, proteins and collagens that you are putting a lot of stress on in your body. Um, I'm aware there are vegan and vegetarian activists, and in, in fact, some cases, there are them. vegan and vegetarian people who are specifically being an activist for animal rights. Um, they make vegan collagen supplements. How? I don't know that somebody else's science magic. I don't need to solve that. Um, but before and after a protest, I tend to have a very hard time eating solid food. Um, when I'm very stressed out, I have a hard time eating solid food. I have an unhealthy habit of running to black coffee and alcohol. Um, and, uh, living off that when I'm stressed out, um, I will just on the bright side, friends. I lose a ton of weight. On the dark side, that's a really unhealthy way to lose weight. Also on the dark side, I just realized I have some internalized, like, I love, I love other people who are, but I'm awful to myself. I'm fat phobic to myself. So, noted. Um, uh, <laughs> moving right along. Uh. Where was I before calling myself on my internalized fat phobia? Um, um, vegan collagen supplements. Vegan collagen supplements. On that note, um, there are also vegan B12 supplements. Um, or you can eat a just fuck ton of mung beans, which are one of the only sources of, of B12. The, the amount of mung beans you have to eat to get, to get sufficient B12 is ridiculous. Just take the vegan B12 supplement, which is where they extract it from mung beans, for you so you don't have to eat all of them. So dehydration and mineral depletion can lead to anemia and pernicious anemia, which ends up being partially a B12 imbalance in the body through complicated, this protein combines with this protein and changes and does this stuff that I'm not gonna get into at the moment. Um, but the same people who are depleted of magnesium and potassium are often also depleted of iron and B12. 
um, and you need all of them in order to have a body that functions. Um, I recommend liquid uh, B12 supplements, not pill form B12 supplements. Yeah. They tend to be more expensive. They're pricier, they're more bioavailable. Also, if you are a vegan or vegetarian and you're not eating a fuck ton of mung beans, I almost guarantee that you are B12 deficient. Um, when I was a vegetarian for two years, I wound up B12 deficient because I didn't know that it only occurs in like meat and mung beans. I think there was one other uh, vegetable source of B12. What was it? Hang on. Um, and that leads to pernicious anemia um, and mood swings and um, dizziness and vomiting and uh, sink pee and all kinds of nasty things. Um, but the first signs are actually like things like cuts in the corner of your mouth and in your tongue, like spaces that it slips, and yellowing hands, if I, if I recall. Oh, yeast extract. Ah, uh, yeast extract, and that's right, um, fermented that's soy. Fermented soy. Um, fermented soy has B12 in it. So if you're having a lot of fermented soy or yeast extract, um, I can't have yeast extract. That'll land me in the hospital. Anyway, um, we recommend that if you are not having bone broth before and after stressful, physically demanding things, have um, some liquid B12 and some collagen supplements um, or something in the family of containing things from a vegetarian or vegan source like fermented soy paste. Um, uh, so like going and getting some donkatsu broth is would be also acceptable. You know, find a, a great ramen joint for you. Anyway. Good luck. For a protest, prep the body, hydrate, get a good night's sleep, um, do some stretches in the morning. I know that sounds ridiculous, and I'm not talking static stretches, which have been proven to actually do micro tears to the muscles of the body. I'm talking right, non non static stretching. This this is a this is an entirely, or this is a tangentially related subject that can be gone on about at length. Yes. But the long and short of it is, you want. You know how in okay, school. Okay, so you don't want to without any kind of warm up, do statically positioned stretch until it hurts. Right. Um, the stretches, the stretches that people were taught in grade school, if you're my age, I don't know if this is what they're teaching now, are actually static stretches or also called cold stretching. Oh, for God's and it's uh, not good for your body. Um, so look up um, warm or active stretches and do some of those. Um, we recommend that you have with you for such protesting um, cold packs or something cold that you can press to the major artery of the body. Um, you cool off a lot faster by pressing something underneath the armpit or to the femoral artery through the inner thighs. Um, if you're gonna be protesting somewhere, cold obviously that changes things um right now we were protesting places that are hot and you would be doing something like layers um made of particular materials i'll get into the materials in a minute um additionally uh so this one needs to be looked up on something like hippocrates and webmd and drugs.com because it is contraindicated for certain medical conditions. If you notice that you are having um, a lot of tachycardia caused by panic and anxiety, um, it might be worth it to look into a Hawthorne supplement or Hawthorne tea. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it myself. I kind of think it tastes like turpentine, um, but as a person who has both anxiety and, um, you know, panic attacks and also has a chronic tachycardia condition, 
Um, Hawthorne has been amazing for me, but that's me. So, you know, um, please look that up. It is contraindicated for a combination with certain medications and it is contraindicated for um, some people. Uh, additionally, the next one should be looked up as well. Dandelion root, toasted, roasted, or, or just dried. Combined with coffee and cacao or um, chocolate can help balance adrenal fatigue. Um, it is very easy right now to just exhaust our adrenaline with everything there is to be angry about and all the ways that people who have CPTSD are being constantly triggered all day long, every day. And maybe they're micro trimmers and maybe they're macro triggers, but it, it tends to be that our adrenaline is exhausted perpetually. While adrenaline uh, depletion can lead to chronic fatigue and can lead to a adrenaline crisis where your body tries to use adrenaline and there isn't any there, which causes you to feel cold, shocky, dizzy, disoriented, sometimes it triggers disassociation where your body just nopes your brain out of it and is like, nope, I, I am putting you over there away. Um, there's all manner of things that can be trigger, triggered by adrenaline, adrenaline deficiency. Now, if it's really severe, please see an allopathic physician for it. Um, but if you're in some of the early stages or you wanna try something herbal for it, then my recommendation is roasted dandelion tea or roasted dandelion combined with your coffee and your cacao nibs. We actually make this in a thermos and bring it to events that we do where we're protesting um, along with sort of a phone where we can look up drugs.com and Hippocrates and FMD and make sure we're not killing everyone around us. It is contraindicated to have dandelion root if you have certain forms of laconic depression and are on medication for it. And that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's other conditions that are contraindicated for. So keep that in mind. Um, but on that note, if you're going to be out there for long times, having a thermos full of tomato soup for everyone, having a thermos of coffee for everyone, um, those little moments where you sit together as activists having a cup of soup can be really healing and, and helpful when it feels like you have the entire world against you taking a moment to have soup with each other to share a cup of coffee and camaraderie can make you feel less alone so moving right along i don't know about y'all but after a long day of protesting and activism i am often uh very, very achy and sore. My feet, I, I have described to Ian, feel like someone made them into angry sponges. Uh, the bottom is spongy and feels bruised. My feet send up like angry exclamation points in my brain. Like, excuse me, excuse me. Do you know what you put yourself through today? Do you know what you put me through? Uh, so for uh, that, we tend to make an aches and pains bath salt. So we take Epsom salts, um, which I use a sheerly ungodly amount of Epsom salts. I do not follow the recommendations of the bath that say, you know, like take a half a cup. No, no, I, I use huge cupfuls of Epsom salts in my baths to which I tend to add Frankincense, pause, note. I blend essential oils into a carrier oil and then use that blended carrier oil in my bath salts. The reason for this is that if you come into direct contact with a droplet of essential oils, um, you can give yourself chemical burns. 
I am a vagina having person. Um, I especially do not want chemical burns in a bath on any kind of mucous membrane. Additionally, even if you don't have a vagina, if you're a penis having person or if you were an intersex person, you don't want chemical burns. So please blend your essential oils into a carrier oil and then blend that into your essence salts. What did I miss? Aches and pains bath salts. Okay. So we use frankincense, myrrh, uh, rose, lavender, and something that contains some amount of capsaicin, black pepper oil, ginger oil, um, clove oil, depending on preference. Um, like Ian likes clove. I like ginger and black pepper. Uh, oh. Our bathroom smells amazing. Um, sometimes anyway. Sometimes. So we blend the essential oils into the carrier oil, blend that into the Epsom salts, and then add that to a hot bath in order to relax our muscles after going and putting them through such strain. Um, Alrighty. You, you may note, by the way, that if you have athletic experience, if, if you have martial arts experience, if you have sufficiently intense yoga experience, to play football, whatever. A lot of this sounds familiar. It turns out that taking care of your body when putting it under strain is pretty much taking care of your body when putting it under strain. Yes. Um, the exact same advice that I would give someone who was competing professionally yeah. is the advice I give in this circumstance. I mean, um, which goes to the next two points, which are Arnica gel and Tiger Balm. Um, be careful with Tiger Balm. Be careful with Tiger Balm. Uh, I use Arnica gel on areas that are sore. Um, I do recommend that if you use Arnica gel, you do not apply it and then work out. Because Arnica is such an effective painkiller that you often won't notice you're putting strain on a muscle. Uh, so I've seen physical therapists recommend that you apply, like if you are injured, you apply Arnica and then go work out. I understand doing that under the guidance of a physical therapist who can tell you, hey, I'm observing signs of muscle strain. Hey, I'm observing signs yeah. that you're, you're pushing that muscle um, too far. Like, okay. It's kind of like, don't go get a tattoo with painkillers, where A, yeah. it's a blood thinner, and B... It means you won't actually be able to give useful feedback. Yeah. Relatedly, actually, this is important. Do not engage in activism under the influence of alcohol. Um, do not engage in activism under the influence of various other pharmaceuticals. The fact of the matter is you want to have emotional control. Do not engage in activism when you are not in full control of your of your actions. Um, I'm aware that sometimes you just had a bad breakup and the protest is tomorrow and you can't reschedule it. Good luck. Right. I know this is not a hard and fast rule. And I'm aware, I'm not talking about marijuana, okay? I am aware that people use marijuana to treat that. anxiety, um, and to get themselves out the door and participating. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your antidepressants, your anti-anxiety medication. I'm certainly not talking about your asthmatic medication or medication for ADHD. Please proceed with those meds as normal. Um, and if you are due to take them at a protest, take set an alarm you. on your phone and take it with you. Um, time passes strangely in protests and you'll speed right past when you're supposed to do something. Yeah, it gets really weird. Um, I'm talking about don't drink heavily or take um, meth or... PCP or whatever. Not a good idea. Um, I've seen people say, 
well, this makes me feel really confident, like I can handle what I'm going through. And it's like, yeah, and it then, also makes you have bad judgment and not think of consequences of your actions through and slug that asshole. Also, um, the police tend to notice if you're on something. Right, don't give them a reason. Don't give them a reason. They want to shut your protest down. Um, let's talk about how I don't recommend um, the normal icing routine for sore muscles. In fairness, you also have fibro. I know. The normal icing routine for sore muscles is to do ice for 20 minutes and then heat for 20 minutes and then ice for 20 minutes. Um, I have noticed that people who participate in protests and in strenuous activism tend to be a little shocky at the end of it. Um, they're either euphoric and exuberant and up, 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 or, or they're, they're exhausted and in shocky and, and, and down. They're actually both a, a sign of having endured something strenuous. People just um, react in different ways. People react in different ways. Sometimes the same person reacts in different ways, depending upon their dopamine and serotonin balance that day. I, I think I simultaneously um, wanted to pass out and go play pool for three hours. You did. You you specifically yeah. mentioned this. Um, ice makes you shocky. Yeah. It does. So if you're already shocky and then you apply ice, you can become more shocky. So I actually recommend what they teach in triage classes for the injured, which is instead heat until you begin to relax, then ice on specific injured areas. So if you've got really swollen and bruised feet, if you've got a really mm -hmm. achy shoulder, um, for five-ish minutes, basically until the pain starts to recede, then heat again, then ice again for 10-ish minutes, then heat again. Um, it's a different wound protocol used for people who have survived war zones, um, where you never start with ice first. You start with a shock blanket and application of heat. Right. Um, um, because... It's a war zone. It's because, right. And we're not saying that protests are war zones, although they certainly can turn into them. But the level of stress that someone can be under can be similar. Yes. So Especially again, the level of training someone may have relative lots of first training. aid training, lots, lots of tri triage training, not a medical professional. Um, I have fibromyalgia, so I can't do the icing part of the regimen at all. It's excruciating. So I have to rely on heat and massage, which brings me to my next point. Not everyone can afford a massage therapist. Not everyone is married to someone who is an excellent massage therapist amongst his many skills. Um, if you can afford a massage afterwards to address the tension points that tend to ratchet up, I recommend it. If you cannot afford a massage therapist, then having a supportive partner and or partners apply soothing healing touch that grounds you in your body as a pleasant place to be, not an unpleasant place to be, might be recommended. Um, I'm aware that not everyone wants to be touched after they've been through something stressful. I am that person. Right. And I don't want to be touched when I'm stressed out. But once you have calmed down and set aside the no, 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 no touching, or if you don't have that, it can be nice to have someone wrap a blanket around you, apply um, a heating pad to the stress points, and then wrap themselves around you. I may be speaking from experience. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Do you want to talk about things to deal with essentially the mental stress of both preparing for activism and dealing with assholes? So I use an affirmation method. Ian does not where I essentially remind myself that this doesn't fix 
the day. It doesn't win the day and it doesn't have to. The change is often incremental that what matters is that we're doing something. We're not being complicit. We do not condone. We are not via our silence encouraging the actions of those who are doing evil. Um, and that I don't have to bring the whole system crashing down in a day. It can feel sometimes like the weight of the world is on every individual act of activism. That if you don't crack the system, you failed. I recommend addressing that before you show up that day and after you show up that day where you sort of sit and go like, if there is me there and even one other person, then I have counted an ally. Then I have found someone with whom to connect to fight for this cause. That's not nothing. I showed up, they showed up. That is good. It helps to manage expectations and to understand that you're not powerless just because you didn't accomplish what you wish you could have if you had all the power. Um. Okay. Did you I, have advice for before and after? Um, you want to get me a drink? I'll get you have? a drink because my using Ian's methods to promote mental health only works. <laughs> <if> <laughs> you have, okay, here's the thing. Um, the way I keep my mind functional is basically by making the different problems I have balance against each other. Um, which is not strictly speaking healthy. Um, it is highly effective, but it's also dependent on having that specific set of issues of mental health problems and knowing all of them and how I react to everything really well. Dialectical behavioral um, therapy is very helpful. Dialectical behavioral therapy is very helpful in this pursuit. But, um, you know, it means that I am just as sort of an example. I use the personality overriding tendencies that come with borderline personality disorder to compensate for major depressive episodes. Um, it's not strictly speaking healthy, it's just effective. Um, so don't take mental health tips from Ian. I have to remind myself that just because I can't wave a magic wand and make the world a better, safer place for everyone in it, doesn't mean I'm not accomplishing something. That just by virtue of being one person trying and now two people trying, and then plus whoever, we have done something. So I use affirmation to manage my expectations. Um, and then when I come home, I use a different affirmation. I remind myself exactly, thank you. That's, that's a perfect application of that idea that you are a limited being, not a limitless being in that instance. Your love for those you are standing up for may be limitless. Your love for the land you're standing up for may be limitless, but you are a limited being in that instance. So try to connect with other limited beings and understand that even if what you accomplish is that connection, you have accomplished something. Um, when I get home, I remind myself that however I am feeling is how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'm angry and sobbing and stressed out and miserable. Other times I'm really up 
and elated and euphoric and actually kind of giggling. Um, and I have to sit and remind myself that however I'm feeling is just how I'm feeling. As long as I'm not taking it out on anyone else or making anybody else suffer because how I'm feeling, then that's how I'm feeling. And uh, I get to accept it. Yeah, it, it um, is what it is. I come home, I found myself when we first started this coming home and telling myself I should feel one way or another. I should be proud and accomplished and elated, or I should feel angry at the shit that the counter protester said that I keep thinking about the way that this other protester responded or you know I'm kind of down like it seems like I just poured myself out and there's nothing left so I just kind of feel hollow you know how I feel is how I feel and braiding myself for it isn't going to change it and accepting the state that I am in has often helped conclude the state I'm in. It doesn't work yeah. every time. But it, is a, but it is helpful when it yes. happens. Um, so, um, in the care before you go, I have noticed that people spend all night prepping for everything that might happen. And then they're exhausted just because they didn't sleep? Mm-hmm. So when I say try and get a good night's rest, I don't necessarily mean sleep. Um, there have been multiple studies into the fact that even if you just lay there doing a restful activity, that is better than constantly berating yourself into trying to sleep and also better than getting up and doing more and more and more. Right. If you cannot sleep, the second best thing for you to do is a restful activity to lay and read a soothing book. Don't read the news. Don't go on to Facebook. Don't spend all day before rest doing that. Do something restful and do that the day after as well if you have that as an option. Right. You may not. Give yourself a recovery day. If you don't have a recovery day, give yourself some recovering time with some non-triggering escapism. I right. have fucked up Take with this. Um, Go for the fluff. Right. So we've got 12 minutes left. Do so you want to talk about some of the herbs? This is not only an herbalism class. Right. So I've touched so far on Arnica, um, on the aches and pains bath. I've touched on the dandelion root. Okay, I was, and I the I, dandelion root. Um, and I addressed using Hawthorne for the anxiety and the tachycardia. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about white willow bark and I want to talk about why I recommend the combinations that I, I recommend it with. Yeah. So I cannot take pain pills. Um, I have gastroesophageal reflux disease, so I'm just a mess. It's ridiculous. Um, I, oh yes, lavender lemonade. Thank you, Annie. That is a fantastic recommendation. We were going to recommend lavender and chamomile tea um, as a calming solution, but lavender lemonade can be fantastic, not only for the rehydration effect of it, but for the culminate, calming effect. Um, so where was I? Right, with the um, white willow bark tea. Salicylic acid. I can't take pain pills. They cause my stomach to bleed, probably an overshare, um, which considering all my medical conditions, there have been several times where people are like, wait, you don't take pain pills? And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> but I do. Oh, all of our followers just went away. What happened? Oh, it blinked back on. I think we must've cut for a second there. So, uh, I do drink white willow bark and whorehound tea. So please note, White willow bark contains salicylic acid and is essentially a painkiller. Whorehound is a muscle relaxant. My grandmother did white willow bark, whorehound, and valerian. Um, I cannot do that. If I drink valerian, my melatonin gets all messed up and I don't sleep and it's nasty. But to each their own. Once again, please double and triple check these with um 
Hippocrates and drugs.com and WebMD and make sure of the contraindications. But I, when you use white willow bark, one, it tastes like licking an aspirin. And then if you like use it. whorehound, it's like a mushroomy, rooty aspirin. And then if you combine valerian, it's like a sweaty gym sock smelling, See, earthy, I mushroomy would... aspirin. See, I really um, like both white willow bark and valerian. Uh, Epocrates is E P O C R A T E S. It's one of my favorite sources. Um, combined, you have essentially made a ridiculously effective painkiller and muscle relaxant, which should be treated with the same respect you would give a painkiller. You and would muscle give relaxant. a painkiller and muscle relaxant. I mean, what you shouldn't you... drive on valerian right when you've you, essentially taken valium right when you com start combining white willow bark with valerian in the right ratio you've basically got yourself herbalist valium adding whorehound to that means that it's herbalist valium that's a little extra relaxing um, um whorehound by the way is one of the original ingredients in dr pepper when dr pepper was an herbalist solution rather than a sugar syrup with artificial flavoring Dr. Pepper used to contain roots and herbs that were used to address pain and muscle stiffness um, and throat conditions. Um, like, it used to contain licorice root, which is great for asthma and bronchitis and basically throat crud, um, and horehound, which is this amazing relaxant. Now, Dr. Pepper is high fructose corn syrup and caramel coloring. However, you can school find beer. old school root beer from the brand uh, Virgil's. Oh, it's amazing. There are others. Well. There are others. Um, we use Virgil's root beer for its ability to fight throat crud. And then we use Virgil's Dr. Pepper for its ability to fight... Um, basically adrenal fatigue um uh i hate the taste of white willow bark tea but i tend to combine it with half lemon and um really good raw honey like the kind that almost tastes like buckwheat flowers like it it, it basically takes that earthy mm -hmm. sour astringent flavor and takes it in a more pleasant direction i use the same dark almost molassesy buckwheaty honey um with hawthorn to take it a little away from the tur turpentine direction um yeah it, it is pretty turpentine by itself yes now uh that moves me to the next one i just mentioned throat crud I don't know about y'all, but I spend all of our protests yeah, with a megaphone. <laughs> um, and by the end of it, I have no voice. Um, That's what real pineapple juice real is Real pineapple juice contains a substance called bromelain, which is way more effective than opiate-based cough syrups. Like, it's, it's more effective than codeine cough syrup. In, in test after test after test, they found that pineapple juice is, it works better. Um, I hate pineapple juice. But I don't like when effective. my food bites me back. But, because the same thing that affects the throat um, also... It's, it's got a really weird effect on your tongue. It has a weird effect on your tongue. It eats your tongue. Um... Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Sky yeah. Tower. Don't have case, any. Um, if you can, you can substitute... Elderberry um, and licorice root. Um, okay, I was going to say aloe vera juice. Oh, okay. You're not wrong. It's effective. It's just disgusting. But if you have a latex allergy, you can't do aloe vera juice. Um, whereas... Mm, granted. Whereas if you can't do pineapple because you have a pineapple allergy and you can't do aloe vera juice because you have a latex allergy or because the taste is appalling it's really <laughs> i i was in musical theater i was told to just gargle with it and 
it's my throat issue then to be fair it worked which is gross oh no it's great it's great um see i can't do it because of latex allergy um, I also have latex so i would allergy. do granny's fire potion which i'll get into in a minute and um essentially you cook down elderberries in raw honey not reaching a boil because you don't want to destroy the antimicrobial properties in the honey. So really low and slow over not even a simmer's heat. Cook down the elderberries until they've turned to syrup and they can coat the back of the spoon in the honey. And then you blend that into licorice root tea. Um, and that will- That will be pretty effective Now if as you well. have high blood pressure, or um, certain forms of tachycardia, like the kind that is caused by high blood pressure, not the kind that is caused by like inappropriate sinus tachycardia, um, and then uh, licorice root. Again, double check me. I'm not going into all contraindications like I do on our in-depth classes, so I'm trusting that y'all will be responsible with your own health. Please remember, herbs are medicine and medicine should always be checked for contraindications. Um, right, which brings me to Granny's Fire Potion, which I'm not drinking right now, I'm just having cognac. Um, okay, Granny's Fire Potion is an abomination. It's so good. Though. That is incredibly good. So, you know those days when you've got a tickle in the back of your throat and you can tell it's gonna turn into something more serious and you'd really like it to not? That's what Granny's Fire Potion is for. It's great for what I call the viral crud, where you go to a doctor and they're like, oh, you just have an upper respiratory virus and there's just not much we can do for you. Antibiotics won't address it. Or, go home and rest. Or it's not worth creating antibiotic resistant bacteria for this. Just right. take a couple days, you'll be fine. Yes, that's what I use Granny's Fire Potion for. So into a cup, about like this, you add one to two fingers of apple cider vinegar. Then you add the juice of half a lemon. To avoid this, the seeds. avoid the seeds, you add good, strong ginger tea. I don't. I use Trader Joe's lemon ginger echinacea juice. One, because it's faster. Uh, we've also been known to use the honey ginger tea mixture. Right, the honey ginger tea mixture. Um, I, tea. I buy from the Asian market near me, I buy preserved ginger that they put in honey. Um, I could make it myself. That would be a pain. But there's just so tasty. And essentially it's, it's peeled ginger in honey and you literally just scoop it out and put it in hot water and you get ginger and honey tea and it's amazing. Um, and then I get to support a small local business owned by an Asian family, so. Um, they make an apple one too, it's really good. <laughs> anyway, so um, I use either one, it doesn't really matter. The point is to get ginger and honey and lemon in there with the apple cider vinegar. Um, then you add a finger or two of either brandy or whiskey. I have started using uh, Dom's Benedictine instead. So Benedictine by Dom is based off a recipe created by an alchemist who was a Benedictine monk who combined uh, a secret, you know, you panacea, panacea of 27 herbs to address what he referred to as traveler's fatigue. So essentially the pilgrims who came to the monastery were exhausted and struggling with minor illnesses. And he came up with this combination of herbs from the Benedictine garden that worked. Now, unfortunately, the recipe is kept secret. The family that owns right. a fam the... A family bought the book that had his recipes in it. They've kept secret all of them. And They've released they several as alcohols. Um, this is one of them. This is one of them. I have stopped using whis whiskey. My grandmother might be appalled 
and started using a splash or two of Benedictine because it is essentially an incredibly potent herbal tincture specifically designed to address fatigue and microbial crud. Um, to this you add, so... To this you honey, add cayenne. And honey and a dash, uh, un raw unfiltered honey and a dash of cayenne. Manuka honey is best. Raw unfiltered local honey is second best. Yeah. I um, don't, I don't recommend, um, I don't recommend heat treated honey. My culture says that heat treated honey is just sugar and sugar is death. Um, stir together, do it like a shock. You want to coat the back of your throat. Right, you want to get, so not like you shoot vodka that tastes bad. Like you shoot a drink where you want to taste it and have it go down the back of your throat. I'm uh, presuming all of you are alcoholics. Um, okay. or really passingly familiar with drinking. So essentially... And there's the, a way you shoot things. So essentially the goal is to have the substance travel instead of along your tongue and down the front of your throat along the roof of your mouth and down the back of your throat you basically want to direct the liquid to the roof of your mouth and down i think of myself as hardcore i don't know if i actually am but i think i am because i go with it um <laughs> so the honey varies if you um if you were to use the honey ginger mixture from your local supermarket or one that you make, you make yourself because you can essentially preserve raw peeled ginger in honey basically indefinitely. Um, then you've already added a spoonful or two of your honey. So like a good tablespoon or so. Uh, if you were, uh, on the other hand, to have used a good strong brewed, home brewed ginger tea, then you need to add one to two tablespoons of honey. If you were using the lemon ginger echinacea juice from Trader Joe's, what is Trader Joe's? So I've been told that Aldi's carry similar products to Trader Joe's, but they're actually two different brothers who split off from each other and they're alienated from each other and they don't like each other. So Aldi's and Trader Joe's are not the same store. But if you don't have Trader Joe's. You may have an Aldi's or a Whole Foods, and I believe both of them can carry some version of a lemon ginger echinacea juice. Yeah. And note on echinacea, you can't do it for more than a week or two. Um, right, they're sibling brands. Um, also note that we are over time. Sorry, I will wrap up. Oh. Um, so... Echinacea is like vitamin C. You can take it temporarily to boost your immune system, but like 50 clove of garlic soup or large doses of vitamin C or, or similar, if you take it for too long, you can crash, it. You can crash your immune system. Um, echinacea is recommended for about a week at max two weeks. Also, if you are taking echinacea at the same time as an antibiotic, you're killing the antibiotic and the antibiotic ceases to function. There are some concerns also with taking too much echinacea, too much birth control. Um, yeah. Like, not too much birth control, but- With birth control. With birth control. It's debated. Some people believe that echinacea influences the absorption of birth control. So, you know, look into that for yourself. Um, I use the lemon ginger echinacea tea or the ginger and honey mixture. You could use a strongly brewed ginger tea and to that add a tablespoon or so of honey. Um, I think that's basically Granny, Granny Spire Potion. So next class, we're gonna pick up on herbalism for activism involving um, homemade sunscreen, uh, homemade sunburn salve, um, but also things like how to deactivate tear gas um, and why you. not to wear your contacts to protest. Please be safe out there, everyone. I know that it's kind of a scary world, but we can 
fight to make it better. All right. Good night. Thanks for joining us.